we cannot think what we're supposed to. There are many denominations that are confused, that try to bring in various factors of the age of Israel into the church age, and that is totally erroneous. You go to a church that lives by ritual, they are confused, and they will never fulfill God's plan for their lives because they are not living under the plan that God has designed for this dispensation. Now, a dispensation is defined traditionally as a period of time during which a particular revelation of God's thinking and God's will is operative, and during which a person is tested as to his obedience to that specific manifestation of God's will, purpose, and plan. The plan for this church age is so radically different from the age of Israel that trying to live God's plan for those who lived in that age will be totally disorienting. Your orientation to both time and to human history is vitally necessary for you to understand God's plan and purpose for your life. So that's kind of a cliffhanger for those of you who are not oriented to dispensations. We'll get to that in more detail later on. But you live in a totally unique dispensation. Now, while there is a different plan for believers in each dispensation, there is only one way of salvation throughout human history, and that is personal faith in Jesus Christ. In all of human history, there is only one Savior, Jesus Christ, though, of course, he was revealed in different ways, in different dispensations. Certainly the way he is revealed to us was certainly different from the way he revealed himself to Adam, to Abraham, and to those in the future. Acts 4.12 sums up the fact that there is no salvation, there is no other Savior. And there is salvation in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven that has been given among men by which we must be saved. Again, Acts 4.12. Now, another part of our definition of dispensations, reason for the dispensations. Why did God create these? Why didn't he go ahead and just leave the same plan he had for Adam and give it to us? Or age of Israel. Why in the world did he not continue the age of Israel and continue it down through history? Well, there are a number of reasons for this. First is for the purpose of revealing his glory to us. Now, there are those who look at human history. It's violence hatred, conflicts, and seriously ask how God can be in any of this. You know, remember perhaps a Time magazine cover back in the 70s says God is dead. There are many people who looked at history and saw things happening around them and said, how can a loving God possibly let this happen? You see, it is only through looking at history, through his eyes that you can see and understand the final outfolding of God's incredible greatness, his grace, and unlimited an unfathomable, wonderful glory. That is why he has allowed all this to happen. And you will see glory as we go through this study. And glory, that I might add, that he has chosen to share with each one of us uniquely in this church age. Many principles, many policies, and procedures that God establishes remain constant throughout history, i.e. salvation. But no careful student of the Word of God can overlook certain changes that distinguish one age from another. And again, why does God alter his administration of human history? And make no mistake, God is in control. He is the one who administers human history. It's not us. He administers it and things unfold for his purposes and his glory. Despite what you see around you, it all fits into his plan. He does so to reveal his unchanging glory his unchanging wisdom and power under these different conditions. From God's eternal perspective, the ultimate in this long and varied demonstration of his character is the relationship between Christ and the church. You see how unique this dispensation is? We, have, we as church age believers have a unique relationship with Christ because we are in this church age. We are in union with Christ. Now, the purpose for this incredible divine revelation unfolds through the study of dispensations. And it lies actually, the explanation for this multifaceted divine revelation and how he does this in different ages, unfolds in human history. And it does so because of an ancient angelic conflict. And this we started to study some weeks ago but I brought that study to a halt and started a faith rest drill instead. 
But another big reason for the dispensations was because of the satanic revolt against God. Now we've noted in our brief study, in our partial study of the angelic conflict, we'll come back to it eventually, that Satan rebelled against God. And this is documented, of course, in Isaiah 14, 13 through 14. And this is, of course, speaking about Satan. But you said in your heart, I will ascend to heaven. I will raise my throne above the stars of God. The stars of God are the, are the other angels. In other words, Satan said, I'm going to have authority over these angels. And I will sit on the mount of the assembly. In the recesses of the north, I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make myself like the Most High. Certainly, Satan revolted against God. Now, as a result of his revolt, God sentenced Satan and those who followed him to the lake of fire. Ezekiel 28, 16-18 delineates this sentence. By the abundance of your trade, you were internally filled with violence, and you sinned. Therefore I have cast you as profane from the mountain of God, and I have destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom by reason of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I put you before the kings, that they may see you. By the multitude of your iniquities, in the unrighteousness of your trade, you profaned your sanctuaries. Therefore I have brought fire from the midst of you. It has consumed you. And I have turned you into the ashes of the earth in the eyes of all who see you. The sentence is a little more clear in Matthew 25, 41. Then he will say to those on the left, Depart from me, accursed ones, into the eternal fire, which has been prepared for the devil and his angels. Okay, so Satan fell prior to human history. And prior to human history, he was also sentenced, along with his minions, to the eternal lake of fire. Now that sentence, however, will not be executed, will not be fulfilled, until after human history. Revelation 20.10 talks about the actual fulfillment of that sentence. And the devil who deceived them was thrown into the lake of fire and brimstone, where the beast and the false prophet are also. And they will be tormented day and night forever and ever. Now that verse is prophetic, obviously. Not only will Satan be put into this lake of fire, but also his fallen angels and any human being that does not believe in Jesus Christ. Now, what happened in between, or between sentencing and the execution of that sentence? God is gracious. So Satan appealed that sentence. And Satan's appeal trial takes place during human history. Satan objected to God's verdict. And just as he continues to contend against God, any objection to perfect divine judgment slanders the character of God. So Satan continues to contend against God by contesting that verdict. In a momentous action, in a gracious action, God convened an appeal trial in which he would demonstrate his perfect character while allowing Satan every opportunity to prove his own case. Folks, we are in the thick of that. What can you, through your life, prove to Satan about God's perfect character? That's why you, as a church age believer, are given the opportunity to mature as a believer because it is by means of your life that you, that you demonstrate, that each one of us has the opportunity to demonstrate to Satan and his fallen angels how just God is. God created the human race to resolve this angelic conflict in human history for our benefit and also for the benefit of the angels. God magnificently answers every aspect of Satan's objection in this prehistoric trial. So every time Satan perhaps stood up during the trial and said, Objection, Your Honor, God just says, Look at my believers. That'll be your objection. Do you, do you understand how I'm perfect now? Do you understand my righteousness? 
Look at that believer growing to maturity. Look what that person's life was full of. Look, look how that person maintained their focus on